Hi, I'm Gus Ramsey, Program Director at Full Sail University's Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting and a proud Rollins alum. I'm excited to announce that the two schools have come together to create an opportunity for the students in my program to do the broadcasting for all Rollins home sporting events beginning this year. It's an honor we are taking quite seriously. My students have been preparing for weeks. They've been meeting with the coaches and athletes, and they're very excited about the reps that they're going to get, but also excited to bring you as good a quality broadcast as we possibly can. That said, these are students in a learning environment, not professionals. We will have a few hiccups along the way, but we are all humbled by the opportunity and we'll do our level best to give you the best quality broadcast possible. On behalf of everyone at Full Sail University, thank you for letting us into the Rollins community. Three, two. Hello and good evening. Welcome to Barker Family Stadium at Rollins College, the site of tonight's matchup versus the Tampa Spartans. I'm Wyatt Wells, joined alongside me is Alex Benayas. Both teams tonight are coming off a loss and are looking to get back on track. Alex, how do the Tars break this four-game losing streak? Well, the way I see it, the Tars need to find a way to convert their chances into goals. So far, their forwards haven't been able to do much. Out of 39 shots, they've only scored one goal. And really, that's something they need to fix. Absolutely. And then Tampa has lost uh, their last game. Uh, they've gone against two ranked opponents uh, in their two matches and played them both pretty close against losing to uh, only one. Yes, only by one goal for sure. Early in the third. How do you think that's going to play into the fact playing Rollins Tars with such quality opponents that Tampa has faced so far? Well, Tampa shows that they can come against tough teams, only conceding goals, and the Tars need to find a way to break that and score on them. Absolutely, and Palm Beach Atlantis is actually the Tars' next opponent, sitting at number two in the rankings. How do the Tars get back, get things rolling again, uh, especially after another tough opponent right after this game? Well, right now, they need to win this game to actually get into the mentality of focusing hard and trying to get the win in the next match. If they can provide good outcomes today, then they can show that next week, well, the next game, they'll be able to perform better. Absolutely. And our two star players to watch tonight are going to be Stefan Avram, as all the Tars know and love, and Jack Richards for Tampa, the goalkeeper. Alex, what are the two impacts these two players are going to have on this game? So far, Stefan Abrams has had eight goals and one assist, and he's leading with um, 17 points, and that's the second highest in the conference. And for Jack Richards, he so far has been able to keep Tampa from conceding lots of goals. As we said before, they've only conceded one goal, and that's a huge factor. That keeper can really save. Absolutely, and the fact that uh, Stefan Avram is their leading scorer with eight goals, and their next leading scorer is Damian Clark with three. This uh, Rollins offense has definitely got to step it up and become more of a one-man team in order to keep uh, their chances live tonight. That's it for right now in the pregame show. We're going to head out to break. Rollins versus Tampa is going to start in just a few minutes. University of Tampa. Explore your dreams. Discover your talents. Get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. To get into sportscasting, you need experience just to get your foot in the door. But you also need to be up to speed on the technologies and media that are shaping the future of this industry. That's why I'm teaming up with Full Sail University to launch the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. We're offering a bachelor's degree that combines the professional expertise that my fellow sportscasters and I have built our careers on. Visit fullsail.edu slash danpatrick. Hi, I'm...
the stadium here as I'm Wyatt Wells. Alongside me is Alex Benayas. Tonight's matchup is the Rollin Tars against the Tampa Spartans. Rollins will be wearing yellow. Tampa will be wearing red. Let's go through the starting lineups. Well, in goal, we have Adrian Iverson. In defense, we have Andre Nassen. Um, Matthew Raisin. Matthew Raisin. Um, Max Muki. Gerky Ray, Barry Frank, Adamako Dominic, oh, Tyler Nagby Tyler, New George, Clark Damien, Raisin Matthew, Adams Christian, Adamako Dominic. And the starting lineups over there for the Tampa are Jake Richards, Ramsey Torre, Adrian Constantine, Till Newman, Juancho Fernandez, Tony Soler, Rohe Smith, Joey Baza, Marcel Salocat, Yzeric Nicholas, and Alex schultz Gistovo. We have the matchups, the game is on its way, and here we go. Rollins right now with the ball. And now we got Christian Adams right now with the ball as he loses it. We gotta kinda set it back up to goal as Jake Richards, the highly talented goalkeeper, boots it out to the back. A 4-3-3 formation. That's mostly covering the wings attacks. Mostly they focus on the sides to attack to get on forward and look for the cross to get it into the striker in the middle. Now Ray Gurk does so well in this position, uh, utilizing his speed. How do you think uh, this position, especially in the defense formation that you see that they're setting up, really benefits him? Right now, he's going to be able to receive a cross from the sides. If they can get a cross through, if they can get by by the wings and be able to get the cross, he'll be able to get inside goal and actually header the ball in. And there was a shot by Tampa there by number eight, Till Newman. And they did not have problems shooting the ball uh, last game against Florida Atlantic. They did very well peppering the goaltender. And even though they got the loss, it really showed them and gave them confidence against a good defense. That ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Rollins' ball. Right now, Rollins seems to be playing off slow, looking for the perfect pass on the wings. So far, we've seen him cross it up forward to the wings, but it was covered by the, one of the Tampa defenders. And Ray Gurk here, the inbound this ball. As we see Adamako go against this defense. Right now, but we saw some miscommunication as he didn't let one of the players know that he was going to go up forward, but then end up sending it out. And now we have Tampa Bay going back in, but it goes back to Rollins' ball possession. Got Andre Nansen passing the ball back. Matthew Ray's on with the clear. And Adamock goes against a, a man number two, who we call Tor Ramsey Torre, who is no slouch of his own. They, he's got a high advantage on Adamock, which isn't saying... Uh, which isn't often against Adamok. He's gone normally the higher matchups against these teams as he tries to get the ball in. That could be a huge factor in stopping Adamako from scoring because if that height could stop the crosses from coming in, his height could basically determine whether or not Rollins can score. Absolutely, and Rollins does thrive off the cross pass as we've seen in games previously. Again, Adamok inbounds Nansen to cross, and that would be a save. Went straight Jake to the Richards. keeper. And that was just e too easy for him. Absolutely. No power whatsoever. you got to get a little more on that. Sometimes you got to test out the keeper with those crosses. Sometimes you can catch him off guard and just basically knock one in if he's not prepared for it. See Tony Soler with the ball. Clears it out across the field. Nice trap there with his chest as he tries to get it to number nine. Juancho Fernandez. And great footwork there by the Tampa Bay, or Tampa offense, excuse me. As we see a little cross. The Tars seem to be on the counterattack right now. So again, Christian Adams did have the speed to get that ball as he crosses it over. Ooh, what deadly cross. If and someone was just, there to knock it in. And that was just booted out by number 24, Ezric Nicholas, as that was great defense by him. Rollins seemed to be really focusing on those crosses to actually get a chance for the forwards to actually score. So far, not too 
not much good crosses, but at least they're trying. Absolutely, as 24 looks over the sidelines, 24 would be again Nicholas or er, Ezric Nicholas as he just passes it right back. They try to flip the field now, get to the other side of the pitch, and that'll be out of bounds. Couldn't corral that. And George New will inbounds the pass. Never mind, he'll give it to Ray Girk. Dominic on a Mako, literally on the white right side is by himself. If they can be able to send the cross over to the right side and send the through ball to Dominic Aramaco, he'll be through on goal. And that was a dangerous inbounds pass as the, as the Rollins defense just had to boot it out of the stands to make sure that Tampa didn't have a fast break. Tampa trying to get it to the guys. Throwing into heavy traffic of the Rollins defense as Rollins intercepts this ball and clears it out to the middle. Right now, no one's up front for the Rollins. And Ramsey Torrey is up front and gets the ball. Passes it back to Tony Soler. Excellent clearance from Matthew Raisin. Had one guy on him, but he was able to clear it out in time so he wouldn't get to it. Throw in for Tampa as it gets to try to get a header out there. And Adamako clears that ball out here. And that'll be offsides right there by number 20, Marcel Salocat. Nice in time for the back line to move up before the cross was able to happen just to catch him offsides. As Rollins tries to run a clear now, shows the speed and gets it back to their goalie. Ida Iverson. And Rollins right now. Oh, there's a free clear there, but it'll be all out of bounds. Or, sorry, offsides. That'll be number nine, Juancho Fernandez, who got a little too excited and crossed. Right now, the, Ro the Tars seem to be playing in the back line, and that's too risky because if they mess up a pass, one of the Tampa forwards can just easily pick it up and get through on goal. Absolutely, and I've seen some speed on this Tampa D. Uh, offense to start out this game and you do not want speed down here on your end of the field. Girk now going against Tampa as Frank Barry gets the ball and gets it back to his goalie preventing it from going out of bounds. And you'll see the Tampa Ooh. offense is very aggressive here as, as Rollins has not got a chance to set up their clear. That was a risky pass in the back to the Icelandic goalkeeper. Absolutely that was almost too easy of a goal. Hansen now with the ball. Crosses back to Adamok. Adamok with a shot. And that'll oh. be far left. Right now, he just wanted to take that shot. Even though it went off. Get a, target, feel, get a feeler for the game. You absolutely. Know? Yeah. Right now, he's got to get into perfect positions to take those kind of shots. Because if he's just running, he kind of could get a bad foot on it and just end up taking the ball out. And always, you know, pre-game jitters, no matter who takes the field, you always want to make sure you get that first kick out. Absolutely. Get a feel for what's going on with you. Tony Soler, cross through, and that'll be intercepted right there by Matthew Reyazon. And again, this Tampa Bay offense is acting more of their defensive holding as they are getting, they're constricting Rollins' ability to get the ball up the field. Matthew Ray is on with the header. Goes right back to Tampa, though, as Ray Girk tries to go against it. It's a free ball. And while they scored the goal, it will not count as if it's offsides. So Tampa struggling a bit with their offsides and field position here, not really knowing where the line is and getting a little too fast for the defenders. As we said before, Rollins are playing too much in the back. Right now, we saw them lose possession of the ball, and literally no one was able to catch up to the forward of Tampa. And that's not good because this offense right now seems hungry and aggressive. Hansen now with the ball. Crosses out there. Nice chest with Adam Grist Christian who tries to trap it in but it goes out of bounds. Christian Adam seemed to have got too eager to get that ball and, for and unfortunately caused that foul. And he ran into Ramsey Torre as they both went to the ground. 
It'll be Tampa's ball again. And it seems like the position so far has been largely Tampa. I've never really seen a, a Rollins besides that Adamake goal, or Adamake a, attempt at a goal, uh, to really get their offense going and moving. Oh yeah, for sure. Tampa is literally playing on Rollins' side every second. They're putting constant pressure on the defense, and they're forcing them to do some risky passes. Ezra Nicholas here, trying, Nicholas trying to get past, get behind the defense, but not go off sides as he saw they had an open lane down the field. Again, he's calling for the ball again. Tony Soler does not see it. And again, passes it off to Rohe, Rohe Smith. And Rohe Smith seems to be the, the biggest aggressor right now for Tampa as he's the one sprinting toward all the defenders before they even get their clear set up. Dominic Adamako is going up forward trying to look to see if he can get the cross in, but no one seems to be getting open inside the box. Right now, he's just playing around in the sides. Again, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Rollins College. We are currently 35 minutes left until halftime. It is nil-nil, both Rollins and Tampa. I'm Wyatt Wells. Alongside me is Alex Venegas. <laughs> Alex Venegas. Sorry, I almost called you Andrew for a second. It's fine. <laughs> Trying to focus on both things at once. We have a great game so far matchup with Tampa seemingly to push the ball more on offense than Rollins has been able to get to so far. He kind of overran his man there a little bit as he just cut back. Easy pass. Let's see if he gets past. Try, he trying to show that speed still against Frank Barry, but Barry's no pushover. He's, got, he's been a fantastic defender for Rollins so far, especially living at that back and booting balls out from the middle. Yes. So far what I see is that the Spartans are playing heavy possession. Right now they're just pulling in any Rollins players so that they can bring them out of position and search for a pass to see who's open on the sides. And Adam Axo, it did not get called off sides, oh. but oh! A foul. And that's going to be a foul on Tampa. As we'll see, it was that Hansen who got tripped up. Hansen seemed to have a little, uh, yeah, right there. We could see it on our, on our camera. Hansen trying oh, to. Oh, he got, was pulled from behind. Yeah, I got a little ahead of the defender, and he kind of just decided to take him down there. Now, would you see that as a smart move if you were the coach for Tampa, or more of a dumb mistake? Well, what I see is that that's a tactical foul. Right now, he couldn't do anything. Absolutely. If he would have not done that foul, one of the Rollins strikers would have gotten through easily. And you'd rather have a uh, foul right now than an easy goal, as Hansen did have. And it looks like it's going to be a free kick. Yeah, right now, George New and... Um, Dominic Adamakos are talking about who's going to take it. Either on the right foot or the left foot. And it looks like 25 for Raw. No, never mind. It'll be trying to fake him out as George. Adamak went for the ball, but instead George New took the hit. Sailed over the goal, though. Now, would you like to see a little more aggression here from Rollins as they try to kind of mimic what Tampa's been doing to their defense and kind of constrict them as you see Adamako kind of backed off and are giving them room to run up the field? Well, Rollins doesn't seem to be much of a, um, a force to be putting pressure on the defense. Right now, they got to look for conservative passes because they keep playing up back in the back line. And with those risky passes that keep, they keep doing, that could be a big fault and leading to them conceding a goal. Hansen brings a bat. Is that a bat that just flew across? That's a crazy. That was just a tiny bat that came from the top of our booth. As Frank Barry gets the ball again. He'll pass it out to Ray Girk. And Girk's at the speed. He's trying to show it. And it just gets a little away from him as he goes over the ball. But it'll still be Rollins' possession for a throw in. George New with the ball now as he gets beaten out though. Right now Max Mueke is looking to find but and then it happens to be across. You're right, Max Mueke had, did kind of look as he tried to corner that to try to maybe hit that ball into the goal while there was a big pile in the middle and the goalie was maybe confused as the goalie runs oh. up. Oh, and almost gets a kick to the face. And that's some gumption there by the, the kicker to run right into harm's way as we see this replay right here. 
at that moment, we had to have had one of the TARS players be ready to pick up that rebound. Because if not, it would have been a goal. Absolutely. And that went right to his face. And he showed no signs of uh, being afraid. What you really like to see out of a goalie and probably explains why he's been so good this season so far. Right now, that took quick reactions. Quick reactions. Because if he would have been slow, he wouldn't have been able to actually touch that ball. But due to him, as we saw, great performances, he knows how to do quick reaction saves. And Rohe Smith is trying to pull it up the field. He's going to look for a cross. And that Tampa was wide open there in the middle for a header. That was number eight, Till Newman, who was right in front of the goalie, who looked to at a header, but he kind of had a little bit above him. That was a real risky pass because there was no, none of the Rollins defenders was in front of him covering him for that cross. And if Newman, that yeah, Newman, cross would have been just face. lower enough, he would have been able to score that. It looks like we're going to get a substitution. That'll be number 22, Eric Rostlun. Taking place of number 16, Joey Baza. The coach giving Baja, Baza, uh, talking to, just some coaching up. So trying to see what they could do next in this ball game. And let's see, we got a whistle on the officials. Tempo shooters have an advantage, especially with that height. Literally none of the Rollins forwards can get past them. Every cross, there's someone being able to header it. Or every high ball, someone ever, someone in the defense is able to header it out. Absolutely. Yeah, they definitely have a lot of uh, height on this team and is definitely winning in, front of, uh, in favor of Tampa. And look at that footwork right there. That was some pretty passing. As they give it right back to number 13, Rohe Smith, who's really been the offense. And great job by Frank Berry to close that out and shut his lane off and able to get no goal. As Tampa's going to look for, Tampa's going to try to look for a foul, but he's not going to get it and it'll be a goal kick. Great timing from Frank Berry. He was able to time that little slide so that he would actually get to the ball instead of hitting the player. Berry showing why he's one of the best defenders on this Rollins team. As Girk gets the pass taken away from him, and it'll be Tampa's offense again. And again, Tampa looking for a call. And I hear the saying free kick as you see number nine, Juancho Fernandez is a little upset with the official. Did you see what was called on there? I didn't get to see that moment. You see, did not look happy with the ref as Frank Barry clears it out of to the other side of the pitch. Adamako now. Take it out, go back to Tampa. Barry heads it back out. Ray Girk. I feel like Rollins need to change that, the way they're playing right now, because if they just focus on the crosses, they're not going to be able to get through. Since Tampa has the height advantage, those crosses won't be as effective. And Rollins got another call as it looked like Girk went to the ground. Again, Tampa not happy with the call so far as they've been seemingly displeased with them going Rollins' way. We'll see Adamako try to set up the offense right here and maybe cross it in. Adamako is looking to find some open space, but no one seemed to be open. He's trying and to look for someone to help him out. And that's fantastic defense right there by number 24, Ezra Nicholas. He was able to nutmeg that Tampa player, but sadly he was tackled into the ground. Let's see our replay here as he... Yeah, <laughs> <The> nutmeg. <laughs> yeah, he got him. Again, 27 minutes left until halftime, and it's currently still nil-nil. Let's see how the Tars can set up for this little free kick. Rollins so far has had two shots on goal. Why, uh, I apologize, Tampa has only had one, which is really surprising to me because Tampa has seemed to have the majority of the offensive possession so far as they get it right now and try to use their speed to get down the field, but Rollins will take it back. They're looking for a setup to Adamak, but it's headed back out. George New seems to be really persistent after that ball. After sending that cross, he literally went after the rebound for it. And Adamak tried to take that ball away again, but it'll get called again as he, I believe, hit the hand of the defender with his cleat. Again, I'm not sure I did not see. 
Rollins is really trying to take away the right side of the field for Tampa, as you as we've been able to see. Ezra Nicholas and Rohe Smith have been wide open and had open lanes down here on the left side of the pitch. And have almost just seen wide open. And that's what you really don't want to do for Rollins, as you see Adamak is eyeing. Let's that see right that'll be either Rohe Smith or Tony Soler, 24. My apologies, Ezra Nicholas. But with that speed for Tampa, that's not something Rollins is going to want to get behind. Well, the only way the Tars can get through is if they can get a perfect through ball on the right side that they can catch the defender off guard, but then Adamako can just turn in to get on goal. Hansen goes back over to Barry. Rollins trying to get open and finding some space as Girk tries to make some. And that'll be intercepted by Tampa. Tampa pushing up the field. They'll lose control of the ball. And it'll be a free kick for Tampa right now. Taking it will be number 10, Tony Soler. And that's going into the goal, and it gets headed out by the Rollins defense. As Adamako kind of gets a little shaky with his foot there, but has managed to get it out of bounds to keep Tampa from pushing the ball. Frank Berry, Frank Berry is really holding on to that defense tightly. He's not letting through anything. Right now, as you just saw, he headed the ball out, even though it was a really dangerous cross. Ider Iverson with the save as they try to cross it over. Damian, Damian Clark, Clark. missed that header, and it'll be uh, it'll be Tampa's ball again. Hey yo, say <laughs> had a throw in, and we had uh, Mueki chuck that ball down into our broadcasting booth. So it nearly hit one of our one of our guys out here. It was a close one for sure. Always got to be on your toes. Anything can happen, realistically. And as you've noticed in the starting lineup, Stefan Abram hasn't didn't start this game, and I haven't seen his name called so far. Abrams over there, he's got a, he seems to be waiting on the sideline. He looks like he's going to be getting in pretty soon, but he hasn't been in so far with this whole game with 24 uh, minutes left until halftime. Again, we talked about Stefan versus uh, their wonderful goalie and Jack, uh, Jake Richards. Uh, how do you think this Rollins offense has fared so far as there's a cross in and Jake Richards saves that again? But back to my point earlier, Alex, what do you think Rollins' offense has to do to open up it a little more and make Jake uncomfortable? Well, one thing is that they're focusing too much on the crosses. They can't be able to get the cross. They need to change a new tactic. Basically, get someone in the midfield that can send passes through the middle so that one of the forwards can actually get through on goal. And Rollins pushing up the field now. As number 17 is wide open. And Ooh, what a save. What a save there by Jake. Jake. And as the Rollins fans are calling for a flag, as it seemed like number 17, Christian Adams took a big hit and tumbled on the ground. He looks a little bit shaken up as the fans and the coaches for Rollins were calling for a flag. My apologies, a whistle. But they hadn't gotten one so far. It'll continue to be Tampa's ball. What a save there by Jake Richards, right in his face. Absolutely, literally. You had to have the great reactions to actually get to that. Because if he would have been one second late and put his hands up, he wouldn't have gotten it. And he went full air in that. His body did left the ground. Talk Goal about dedication there. Goalkeepers have to be trained to get off and to be fast on their feet and just to rise. And Adamako takes it out of bounds. Dangerous pass there by Tampa as Christian Adams was pretty close to intercepting that ball, and there would have been no one in front of him. Adamako now with the ball. He passes out to Ray Girk, who tries to set it up. And that'll just be an easy pitch and catch to the goalie. 
The cross wasn't really directed at anyone since no one had went forward, but then at the same time, that cross wasn't well timed and just went straight towards the keeper. That seemed more of a Hail Mary attempt of a shot than a cross, <laughs> as there was no one in that area. <laughs> and Smith now trying to move his offense down the field into Rollins' territory. Smith has that speed to get on the outside as he crosses over. And it'll be intercepted and kicked out of bounds by Matthew, Matthew Reyeson with a great... Uh, They're saying it could have been a handball, but I think he got to the foot. He got it with his foot instead. I, I didn't see hands there. I saw body, but again... <laughs> Tampa could be seeing it through uh, red-colored glasses. <laughs> so we don't know as of now. As we see Ider Iverson trying to clear the ball. And Tampa hasn't really gotten too aggressive as we Nansen try to get out there. Adamako lose that head loses that heading battle, but he was shoved from behind. I was gonna say they took a little bit of a push in the back and was looking for the ref to call that. It'll still be Rollins balls. They set it back to their defense. They're gonna look to give it to Barry. Pretty risky play playing in the back. They kind of have to send it up forward, at least in the midfield area, instead of having to have pressure back in the defense. And they've been doing that this whole game so far. And that's eventually going to burn you, especially against this talented Tampa team. And again, uh, being able to call this, uh, call this game tonight, you know, we're both affiliated with the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. Rollins College, Rollins College has actually partnered with Full Sail University's Dan Patrick School of Broadcasting to bring you play-by-play -play and color commentary for a variety of live events throughout the year. As we see Tampa kicks that ball back out. The Dan Patrick School is proud to offer its students this real-world experience by working with Rollins College Athletics all season long. And really, you can't help, you can't, uh, you can't deny these reps. They're really helping us. As we see Stefan, Stefan Avram. One of our watch uh, key players in tonight's game is going to enter the field with 19 minutes left till halftime. Maybe he can give uh, his offense a little bit of a boost and a spark. What a send up forward! And Christian Adams had the ability, had the uh, had the speed on it, but Ramsey Torrey caught up with him and was able to slow it down. Both teams kind of seem to be getting a little chippy here, don't you think? It's a very physical game, and both teams are not really seeing eye to eye when it comes to the. Uh, the penalties right now what both teams can hope for is who can get to the ball fastest and can take off with it because so far everyone's catching up to everything that's going on as we saw from one side oh scratch that <laughs> oh that's fine as we see Adam Adamok try to chase down actually my bad that's to be Damian Clark and it'll be Tampa's ball it looks like they're going to be substituting now. A little Seems bit of confusion like as Stephen Abrams. Stephon Abram will be coming in for Christian Adams. And, and Dominic Adamakul seems to be switching sides all the way to the left. And Till Newman, right. Till Newman was subbed out for number seven of Tampa, Julius Becker. Julius Becker is a forward 5'8 freshman out of Germany. And it seems like this Tampa men's soccer uh, this soccer team has a lot of variety. Uh, not a lot of people from America. A lot of overseas players. As well as with the Tars. We got people from Iceland, Germany, France, and even England. We can't forget about our Tars. Absolutely, and they're doing a great job. Both teams have fantastic depth. Has fantastic defense there by Ramsey Torrey as he just kicked that ball out. But Ray Girk is going to try to send it back in. And he'll be unsuccessful. They're trying to push it upfield now. To the left As side. Julius Becker see. with those fresh legs. Trying to get it out. He'll cross it inside. And he'll be booted back out by Rollins. Perfect timing for Tyler Nagy to clear that ball off. Because if not, if he wouldn't have been there, that cross would have just went in to someone from behind. And Julius Becker utilizing those fresh legs against possibly a tired Rollins defense. As he tried to get that corner. And that'll go out of bounds again. Good save there. Good presence by Eider. As you see, he's congratulating his defense on a good defensive stand. Or asking for the ball. One or the other.
Again, welcome to Rollins College. It's currently nil-nil. Rollins versus Tampa. Rollins being in yellow, Tampa being in red. Currently 17 minutes until halftime. Stephen Abrams with the header towards him, but wasn't able to. And Alex, what have you seen so far throughout this game? Any trends? Well, what I see is that both teams seem to be losing possession easily. So far, they're just looking for the cross up forward, and whoever's the tallest can get to it can probably. But defensively, they're both under pressure all the time. Like right the now, offense gets back. Julius Becker has a wide open lane. He kind of waited a little too long. He takes that shot. And Ida Iverson's just going to easily pack that up before he goes out of bounds. That shot was not on target. Julius Becker had an opening, but he kind of waited a little bit as he kind of saw pressure coming from Rollins. And that was number two for Rollins, Andre Nansen, who did a good job closing in. And he elected to kind of sidestep and get another look, but that wasn't too bad. As that almost goes over the head of Jake Richards, but uses his length to catch up and grab that ball out of the air. And Ramsey Toure, who is easily probably the highest person, if not on the field in the stadium, Gets it back out to his offense. As we see Becker again get a little too ahead of himself as the ball gets and sails out of bounds. And we'll see Andre Nansen throw it in. The Tars sure do favor playing in the back line. Seems pretty risky in my opinion. <laughs> they like to live life on the edge apparently. <laughs> Frank Barry wants to get that stuff, get that out of there, though. Stephen Abrams open by himself. He can send that pass through the Damien. Let's see. He's got, fre he's got fresh legs. He's taking off right now. Julius Becker, though. How about that? Chases Abram easily, our best defender, all the way down from the other side of the field. Both seem very talented on the ball and are providing good sparks for their teams as Becker is easily shown he's outmatched. As we'll see, Frank Barry... Kick that ball out of there and hold his own against the speed of Rohe Smith. He was really looking for that clearance because if he wouldn't have got to it, he would have lost footing right there. And Tampa, he's got an opening. Great defense though. Ray Girk. Absolute wonder. That was, uh, that was going to be a power ball because he was winding up that leg and Ray Girk took it like a man. Good thing he was there to block it. Body, yeah, got his body in front of it. Coach is telling Iverson to get the ball out. And looks like we have an injury timeout right Ooh. here. That's Stephon number Abram seems yes. to be down. Stephon Abram, which is not a good sign as he's only been in the game. I apologize, that's Christian Adams. Not Stephon Abram, who's dealing with a little bit of injuries. He walks off the field. He'll be, he'll be replaced by number 24, Ryan Lasky. My, my apologies, Logan Lasky. And I didn't get a chance to see what happened to, to Adams. He kind of was just down on the floor as we saw Tampa was really taking the offense to Rollins with that shot attempt. And I didn't get a chance to see what was going on with Adams. Maybe he kind of got tripped up. Probably got a cramp after all that running. And we're going to get another substitution for Rollins soon. Rollins right now currently trying to break a four-match losing streak as they've yet to win a conference game. Conference opponents have really been a thorn in uh, thorn of Rollins' side as they've only had one goal since they've started conference play. Those losses really are taking a hit on Rollins, especially on the conference. If they aren't able to win this game or the next, they won't make it far in the conference. Yeah, and their postseason hopes are going to be gone soon if they don't really step it up and turn this around. They and really this, need to work on those forwards for sure. Yeah, this game is getting really a little bit uh, chippy as both uh, players are yelling, both sides of the teams are yelling at each other. A lot of it's a big, it's a physical matchup. Now be out of bounds. Rollins' ball is Ider Iverson. We'll take it. It looks like Simenu is going to come in for Rodrigo. 25. Yeah. Tyler Nagby. Nagy. Tyler Nagy. And we'll see if Simenu can get a little spark on offense or break off this slow start that Rollins gets on getting to the other side of the field.
Iverson seems to really favor those long, long kicks into the other opposing side. He's definitely got a leg, that's for sure. As we see, Rollins gets over as he hurdles the defender. And Tampa will regain possession. Rollins trying their best to stay on this side of the field as Ray Girk tries to field it back out. And he'll run into the wall. It'll be Rollins' ball. Throw it immediately. Wasn't making sure, he wasn't trying to make sure that the Tampa defender wasn't ready. Andrew Nassim with the ball, trying to go up forward, ends up passing it to... It's number 24, Logan Lasky, who came in for the game, and Simenu is going to try to get in the middle. Lasky again. My apologies, that's a crossover to Andre Nansen, who almost got it in. And that'll he go was on right the there <laughs> in the perfect moment, but was unable to get a perfect touch on that ball, just to hit it smoothly, but sadly... Ends up hitting it over. And that was a good shot attempt, though. Surprisingly, Rollins has kind of changed a little over these uh, last couple minutes, a uh, few possessions. Both teams have four shots on goal, even though it seems Tampa Bay started off really controlling the possession. My apologies. That is Tampa with four shots and Rollins with three. Scoreboard uh, hints that they are both tied, while our board says there's only a, uh, one third difference. And a big thing uh, right now that probably hasn't led to as many goals uh, for Tampa is their offsides calls. They've had four offsides calls already. And really that speed is not really an advantage for them so far as they've been getting too, uh, past the defenders too quickly before the ball crosses. Frank Berry really stick to that offensive attack, literally being right there every moment at it and so that he won't be able to send in the cross. Instead of a corner, he'll try to kick it out. And a little bit of a knife kick as he tries to shred that defense. Tampa again with a nice shot <laughs> as they boot it. It was a real close call. Good thing one of the Tars was able to be there and send the ball out. Iverson now looking at Barry. But Barry's going to be cut off by Rohe Smith. So instead he's just going to boot it out and it's going to be a little bad, uh, battle that was going to go over the heads of looks like Damian Clark. Seems like a battle of who can send it to the other side farthest. See, so as Tampa tried to get it to Julius Becker who was wide open on the sidelines but it was intercepted. Raymond that could be now. risky. That looked like a tiny bit of a hold to me. I'm not sure. Refs did not call it, though. Barry really didn't want to let him They're go. They're trying to get in the middle, setting up a shot. And Rollins kicks that back out, but it's getting past to Tampa. Whoa, and what a long shot. What a long ball there by Tampa as Ider Iverson has to go full body reach to make sure that doesn't go through the top of the key. Instead, it sails just barely over. Good thing Iverson was prepared for that shot, because if not, it kind of could have went in. Still about nine minutes left till halftime. Still nil-nil. No team has been able to break away as of yet. Simenu now trying to defend as best as he can to Becker. Becker's going to look for the... Look for the inside out. He's going to try to cross it. Never mind. He's going to try to keep it himself. Showing that fancy footwork. He still goes for the ball. And Rollins sets it back up at the top. Ooh. And that'll be a... And Tony Soler is not happy with that call. The ref says both him and Mueki went down on the field, uh, down on the pitch. He did slide tackle from behind, and that's one big thing that could lead to why it was a foul. Again, it is still only eight minutes left until halftime. Nil nil, both teams, Tampa Another and Another cross for Damian ends up sending it back, but sadly the Tars lost it. And that's another offsides call by Tampa. That's their fifth one now. Sixth. As our board is yet to update. But that'll be their sixth thing. They, again, you, any team's speed you, you would think would be an advantage in soccer. Uh, 
again, to my knowledge, that's especially what I used when I played was my speed was my biggest factor. But, but right now with Tampa, it seems like it's hurting them more than helping. Like we said, this defense of the Tars surely are knowing when to move up forward to end up causing that offsides. Because if the Tampa continue this just running at without looking up who's up ahead, they'll mostly just get offsides the entire game. And that's Stefan Avram who crossed it through, but no one was there in order to take the pass. Stefan Avram was being pulled on, but was able to send the pass and through, that was a, but yeah. sadly none of the Tars was able to. That was a beautiful pass through the middle. Unfortunately, no uh, Rollins players were there and able to set up the shot. And it's going to roll out of bounds. Rollins ball. Seems like a change for Kevin DeRocha coming in for Damian. And DeRocha is going to give Damian a little breather now as Damian's done a great job so far on defense and on offense for Rollins as he held his own against Tampa's offense. DeRocha now. My apologies, Sanu. We'll pass back to Iverson. Back to Frank Barry. Again, trying to spread out the... Uh, the attacking aggressiveness of the constricting Tampa play calling here. Getting to try it out to Ray Gurk, but it was too far. And Jake Richards just going to boot that back out to midfield. The Tars sure to be on the fence, especially with these attacking force from the Tampa. They're just attacking, attacking, but sometimes it's uh, offsides, but sometimes it's like a cross into the goal. Sadly, sadly they won't be able to make a chance out of it since one of the Tars defenders is it there to block it. Fancy footwork, footwork there by Tony Soler. And Ezra Nicholas tries to kick it out in the middle, possibly get it to Rojay Smith. And Rojay Smith was just being talked about being subbed out, but his coach went up to our booth and let him know that they are, he plans to uh, keep Rojay Smith in the game when he does this next substitution. Do you think that's more of that's the quality to how Rojay has been playing this game so far? Because he's done a great job for Tampa and the Spartans, especially utilizing his speed, even though he has had a few offsides penalties. But Rollins, with that change, it could be to show that he could... Um, Roche could be tired since adding new legs doesn't hurt much, especially in this point, almost nearing halftime. They kind of need an extra boost to get through on goal and be able to score. And with about four minutes and 35 seconds left till halftime, both teams are going to try to get ahead as that's a boot up. Dangerous as Jake Richards is off, and it's a goal! Jake Richards lost his footing when he attempted to get the ball. And Rollins cashed in on it. Number 24. Who else but Logan Lasky comes in off the bench and makes a huge goal for, for Rollins. Again, Jake Richards had a good, uh, good setting on it, as we see right here on our replay. It just got away from it. It bounced off a little bit. Like we said before, sometimes you got to take those far shots to be able to test the keeper. Like right now, the keeper was caught off guard, and one of the touch players was able to take advantage of that and freely. score. And just like that, as we talked about what team was trying to get ahead and push before halftime, Rollins answers the bell and gets a goal with under four minutes, about four minutes and 20 seconds remaining until halftime. And now we're probably going to see a lot more aggressiveness from Tampa as they're going to try to get a goal of their own. That's one thing. If you get scored on right before halftime, you kind of have to take advantage and try to score back it's so a that it'll be yeah, tied. It's a momentum switcher as Tampa seemed to make their own player. Rollins playing with a whole new attitude now as they seem to have a lot more life in them oh, and playing with flick. a lot more speed. <laughs> 19 DeRocha try to head that ball in but gets back out to Sanu. DeRocha seems to be playing that holding midfielder just holding onto the ball and be able to send it forward. And the fans are clamoring for another goal as they had a wide open lane. Ray Girk now trying to set it up as he crosses over. The Tars are really taking advantage of this momentum switch. Right now, we just saw two attacks almost happening. 
and the fans are into it, you can tell this is exactly what type of crowd you need to have in order to build on this lead. Right now, you see Tampa's kind of out of sorts. You know, they just had that goal scored on them. Rollins is coming back and being the aggressor, getting on the field, shooting those shots, and the fans are in it as well. So right now, it's not a good time, and Tampa's going to have to weather this storm if they want to get out of halftime without a 2-0 uh, deficit. Tampa is really under pressure because they kind of have to score if they want to be able to have a chance to continue on to the, for this game. I wouldn't go as far as say that. I mean, there's still a lot of time after halftime, but it would uh, help a lot for momentum. Ramsey Torre now with the ball. Actually, is taken away again by Tony Soler. Tampa really and intercepted for by Rollins' defense. <laughs> Rollins trying to get it to Damian Clark. Ray Rollins Dirk now surveys the field. Rollins right now seem to be playing possession-based play. Right now they're just passing it to whoever's open, pulling in someone trying so they can send it another way. I was going to say, another way. to get the halftime. As Iverson's just going to boot this one over to the other side of the field. Stefan Avram passes out to number 16, Cyrus Simenu. Damian Clark will run down the field. Girk now going to set up a cross, but it's going to be denied. Pretty weak cross. cross. Oh, and that'll be a whistle. Damian Clark as he kind of ran to the defender there. The defender hit the ground. A minute 30 left till halftime. Right now, Rollins up 1-0. Jake Richards now slips on the turf. Sorry, not the turf, the field. Got to get that over to Rollins. Side of the grass. What ball control from Kevin DeRocha? And as there's about one minute left of, left of the halftime, let's do a quick recap here. Again, Barker Family Stadium. Tampa versus Rollins. Rollins looking to try to uh, answer back from a four-game losing streak. Currently nil, uh, no one nil. Rollins got that 41st, uh, that Logan Lassie goal in the 45th, 40, 41st minute after a good save by uh, Jake Richard, but ultimately he was on the ground and the ball got away from him. The keeper was cut off guard for sure for that, but good thing Rollins was able to capitalize that on that and chance. They're trying they to send it over as they get one last push to try to be the aggressor with 15 seconds left. He's going to boot it up. Becker's have it. Becker with the footwork. He had a great thing, and they're just going to send it out of the Amazing. stadium, and that's going to hit a car. Amazing for that last chance that Andre Nassen was able to come in at that perfect time to head the ball out. And that'll be halftime as Rollins is happy with that late surge and ability to get uh, get up on Tampa before halftime. Again, Barker Family Stadium, Wyatt Wells. And Alex Venegas. Again, the 41st minute goal by Logan Lasky was huge for Rollins as it seemed to have completely shifted momentum and the ability, uh, just the, the readiness and uh, ability of Rollins. They played with a lot a bigger edge. With that goal, they could lead to a big men mentality shift of them performing well, being more confident in the second half. And that'll be key as both teams uh, had yet to break away from any, uh, each other. They both seemed evenly matched until that Logan Lassie goal. Right uh, before we go into the break, is there anything that you'd like to see they make adjustment, uh, adjustments before halftime, either Rollins or Tampa? One thing I want to see is less of playing in the back line for Rollins because if they end up missing up one of those passes, one of the Tampa players can easily get on it and just get their own goal. All right, there we go. Wyatt Wells. And Alex Venegas. We are going to go into halftime right now. We'll see you all after the break.
To get into sports casting, you need experience just to get your foot in the door. But you also need to be up to speed on the technologies and media that are shaping the future of this industry. That's why I'm teaming up with Full Sail University to launch the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. We're offering a bachelor's degree that combines the professional expertise that my fellow sportscasters and I have built our careers on. Visit fullsail.edu slash danpatrick. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. To get into sports casting, you need experience just to get your foot in the door, but you also need to be up to speed on the technologies and media that are shaping the future of this industry. That's why I'm teaming up with Full Sail University to launch the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. We're offering a bachelor's degree that combines the professional expertise that my fellow sportscasters and I have built our careers on. Visit fullsail.edu slash danpatrick. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. To get into sports casting, you need experience just to get your foot in the door, but you also need to be up to speed on the technologies and media that are shaping the future of this industry. That's why I'm teaming up with Full Sail University to launch the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. We're offering a bachelor's degree that combines the professional expertise that my fellow sportscasters and I have built our careers on. Visit fullsail.edu slash danpatrick. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Everyone from the Princeton Review to Condé Nast Traveler regularly ranks Rollins as one of America's most beautiful college campuses. Zoom in, though. Take, for example, our conference-style learning environment. Consider the dozens of high-end laboratories and collaborative workshops. Drop in on the professional performance venues where our student artists hone their crafts. Stroll by the courts and playing fields where our student athletes develop lifelong leadership skills. Take a closer look at Rollins, and you'll realize our beauty runs deep.
to get into sports casting, you need experience just to get your foot in the door. But you also need to be up to speed on the technologies and media that are shaping the future of this industry. That's why I'm teaming up with Full Sail University to launch the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting. We're offering a bachelor's degree that combines the professional expertise that my fellow sportscasters and I have built our careers on. Visit fullsail.edu slash danpatrick. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Everyone from the Princeton Review to Condé Nast Traveler regularly ranks Rollins as one of America's most beautiful college campuses. Zoom in though. Take for example our conference style learning environment. Consider the dozens of high-end laboratories and collaborative workshops. Drop in on the professional performance venues where our student artists hone their crafts. Stroll by the courts and playing fields where our student athletes develop lifelong leadership skills. Take a closer look at Rollins and you'll realize our beauty runs deep. To get into sports casting, you need experience just to get your foot in the door, but you also need to be up to speed on the technologies and media that are shaping the future of this industry. That's why I'm teaming up with Full Sail University to launch the Dan Patrick School of Sports Casting. We're offering a bachelor's degree that combines the professional expertise that my fellow sportscasters and I have built our careers on. Visit fullsail.edu slash danpatrick. This is the University of Tampa. Explore your dreams, discover your talents, get ready to invent, innovate, and be a leader. This is the University of Tampa. Everyone from the Princeton Review to Condé Nast Traveler regularly ranks Rollins as one of America's most beautiful college campuses. Zoom in though. Take for example our conference style learning environment. Consider the dozens of high-end laboratories and collaborative workshops. Drop in on the professional performance venues where our student artists hone their crafts. Stroll by the courts and playing fields where our student athletes develop lifelong leadership skills. Take a closer look at Rollins and you'll realize our beauty runs deep. to Barker Family Stadium here in beautiful Winter Park, Florida. We've got a nice breeze going on as the sun is set and it's officially a night game here. Rollins in Tampa are setting up to start off the second half after a crazy comeback here by, or not comeback I'd say, but a surge of ability by Rollins. For sure. Right now Rollins has been able to score one goal in the first half, which could help him out a lot in keeping a lead. And against... Uh, one of the best goalies that we've talked about so far, Jake Richards. I mean, that guy is a fantastic goalkeeper, and yet Rollins so far has, I wouldn't say won the matchup completely, but they have gotten past him. It was really tough 
for Rollins to be able to score. So far, they have multiple chances, but that keeper, Jake Richards, has pulled so many incredible saves, especially quick reaction ones for sure. There have been times where like Rollins should have scored, but out of nowhere, Richards was able to stop the ball. And Ray Girk is going to come in and throw the ball. He'll get that out to Damian Clark. Simenu is going to try to get it out. Is that kind of got a little way from number three, Max Muecki. And great defense there by Tony Soler. He just got that ball out of there. Great ball control from... We got a cross over the middle. And with the header, while it did connect for number 23, George knew it was not enough heat in order to phase Jake Richards. And we'll see him out. Now, Alex, we, we left the break uh, after Rollins had a fantastic search after that goal. The crowd was into it. They really played with a whole new mentality. As Rollins yeah, now, again, with that mentality, is going on offense. Apologize for that. Trying to get that cross in. As we saw, Stephen Abram literally holding the ball right there, looking for someone to be open, but then was able to get the turn on to send the ball through. But it was... But he got a corner kick out of it. And Stefan Avram starting the second half after he wasn't really in much until later into the first half. Uh, we'll look for him, especially as one of our key players of the night, uh, to see if he can continue uh, helping out his offense. So we'll wait for this corner kick for Ray Girk. That's a pretty good advantage where Frank Berry's position at near post, tall man, come on. If, he can, if they can get a good cross in, he'll be able to header that in near post. And we'll see if you're right. Do you think they're going to try to get it to uh, Barry? Most likely. <laughs> it's got a curve to it. They went after far post, but... And while it went over the head of Barry, number 22 for uh, Rollins, Damian Clark, who's actually the team's second leading scorer with three goals, had the chance there, uh, but it just got a little bit off the right, wrong side of his head. He just wasn't ready for it. He, even I wasn't ready for it. I didn't expect to be a far post cross. And Jake Richards now putting it back out. Rollins is going to kick it back. Barry's looking for Ray Girk. Ray Girk's open by himself, but they end up sending forward. Damian Clark instead now is going to take it. Smart play from Frank Berry. Absolutely. Steals it away from Alex schulz Geshovel as another shot by Rollins. And Rollins looking happy as they're starting to get the looks they want and getting that confidence. It was a really good shot. Sadly, end up curving out to the side instead of just going in straight. And Richards, the junior out of Bedworth, England, clears the ball out. It'll be taken back by Rollins. Rollins pushing the ball upfield. Kevin DeRocho looking up, but he's aiming to make the pass. They've got the angle as George New crosses it over. And that's just over the head of Rollins. <laughs> as number 24, Logan Lasky, didn't have the, uh, the height to get up on that ball. It was a good cross. He ended up finding someone open, far post. Sadly, he wasn't able to jump high enough to get it, but smart play. Logan Lasky with that goal in the 41st minute to give Rollins that 1-0 lead. As Rollins now is going to try to build that lead. And a good def good defense there by Tampa as they get that out of there. That was a dangerous situation as Rollins had the numbers. But good job by Tampa to keep that ball out. And again, who else but Ray Girk will be taking in this corner kick. Ray Girk almost is the really corner kick specialist. You see him take the majority of the corner kicks as he does have a nice touch. He does kind of uh, have to work a little more on his, uh, his how do you say, length of the ball or just uh, that place. So but kind of oversends it a little bit as he sends it that time and it'll be rejected. Deadly cross right there. Still in the middle though is it's not what Tampa wants. What a what a kick by Damian Clark. Damian wanted to take a chance off that volley, but sadly it ended up going out wide. And that would have been a fantastic goal if it would have got in as Damian literally just
twisted on his left foot to try to bomb that ball in. And now it's Rollins' turn to take the majority of the offensive possessions in the second half as it was Tampa who really came out firing at the start of this game. Again, 39 minutes left till the end of this game. Rollins has uh, one point while Tampa has been held to nil. Tampa was surging early in the first half as they did have a good offensive rhythm going but hadn't been able to convert on those five, uh, five shot attempts. Rollins has up the ante now with their offense that now has nine beating out Rollins. It's a huge difference from what we saw before in the first half. Basically, Rollins is taking control of this game unlike before, and they're really looking after which passes are key to end up getting through. And it looked like he, uh, it looked like Ezra Nicholas was going to try to boot that one in to either Iverson. Iverson on his own. He thought about it. that perfect through ball. Let's see if he can get up to it. Ooh. And look at that speed. There's number 11, Stefan Avram, the man we've been talking about to hopefully break out and help his team to come to a victory, utilizing those fresh legs against the defender and trying to turn the corner. Coach coaching up Stefan Avram, though, as he's talking to him from the sidelines. Andre Nansen is going to come grab the ball. So far, we've seen three corners. Let's see. And Let's Girk see. not taking this corner, surprisingly. It'll be Nansen. We'll see what he has to offer as he gets it up a little bit, but a little too low. Not able to get his friends. He's back for the cross again. Cross, once again, has a great header to save it, even though the cross is way over the head of Damian Clark, but he does a great job to keep it in bounds. Seems like Temple is going after that counterattack. And you do not want Raymond, Joe, Raymond James on... <laughs> <laughs> what a stop to stop that counter attack and play. Seems like Roger Rollins Smith. players just bullied off the ball. Roger Smith takes a. Uh, apologies, not Roger Smith. One of the other Tampa players is will try to get his number. I hear Iverson coming to console with him. He'll be getting up on his own, but he did take a pretty big hit getting that middle scrum. Tampa sure are really looking for those counterattacks. That's mostly what they're playing. Oh, and they got it, they got it! Just offsides. And, uh, and then another offsides penalty by Tampa. That's their seventh of the night. And we talked about their speed, how they could utilize it, but so far it has only hurt them as it's going to be their seventh offsides. It had a great look. Ida Iverson was not ready for that, and they seem to have all the momentum going that way for an easy goal, but again, offsides, which has been plaguing the Spartans. Those offsides really have impacted in the play for Tampa. So far, everything that they've done, most of the attacks that they've gone through, was mostly offsides, or if not, just one sending through. Got a ping-pong match there between Iverson and Richards as Iverson boots it over all the way out of bounds to give Richards the ball again. As we see some substitutions here, we see number nine, Juancho Fernandez come into the game. And Alex Shuse Gustovo is the one who uh, was banged up a little there after that play, and he comes and walks out on his own back to the bench. Ooh. New with the face, face ball there to number 11, Mike Schessel. And Ray Girk will throw it in for the Tars. Abram with the skills. Stefan trying to find an opening. What a, what a move. Just too far right. He got a little too excited and didn't plant his feet. He got into the perfect space, but sadly, I don't know what happened, but the ball had ended up... Just look at that pass there. That's fantastic. He did a great move to box out, or to juke out both defenders and had a great lane. Just wasn't able to convert there. Let's see if Barry can get this ball. Barry! He's holding yeah. on to the... A little tempo. bit of a battle there as Barry and... Oh, foul. 
Spread and on to another, Damien. Another, yeah, another foul there. They just seem to be going but all over the field. advantage of this chance, but... And Stefan thrown block. to the ground almost. And Richards takes it to the face and takes it again. And man, it's a great save there. Stefan Abram came in looking like he was going, but he was thrown to the ground. And then out of nowhere, George New comes and hits the shot right to his face. But he does a great job, holds it up, and keeps uh, the save. And that's the kind of plays you see from that goalie, as we see with that replay there. That's what you see. Uh, what, that's what you're expecting out of Tampa's goalie of Jake Richards. Jake Richards really is fast, especially coming out of goal. He knows when to pull out his hands or just to get in position to block that ball. Again, welcome to Barker Family Stadium. Right now we got 34 minutes until the end of the game. Right now, Rollins is up 1-0 against Tampa. My name is Wyatt Wells. Alongside me is Alex B Bernays. 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 Dang it, man. Sorry. I was so... <laughs> So much thing, so many things to concentrate on. Iverson with the goal kick. Let's see how far he can hit it this time. George knew unable to get that, but luckily it went out in favor of the Tars. And Joey Baza, yeah, took that out. As Raker does a good job of throwing it in, and George knew tries to set it up for Damian Clark. It's going to be an offsides penalty, though. He ended up cutting it back to actually sending a good pass in. And Richards trying to look at where he's going to go. Rollins doing a good job trying to cut off his uh, outlets. Damian Clark staring him down. Good header by Tampa to kind of keep that in. That's number 20. Marcel Solocat with that nice pass there in the middle. What a block to stop the forward from and getting Frank that ball. And Frank Berry clearing that ball out. George New now with the ball. And he's just going to boot that. Damian Clark, though, has some wheels. He's going to try to get Richards to the ball. Oh. And that goes off Clark as Richards kind of gives him a little shove. A little love tap there. Damian is really showing his presence right there, knowing that if they end up messing up a pass, he's right there to pick up on it. What a fake into the Rocha. The Rocha with the cross. And look at that. Damian try to cut around the, uh, try to turn around. As Roj Smith now passes off to number 20, Marcel Solacat, which is headed out by the Rollins defense. Damian Clark tried to get some hops on it, but instead DeRocha is going to push it forward. Let's see if Abram can get that ball. He seems to be holding on too well to it. Stephon He's just waiting to send in the perfect pass. Try to look for that cross, and it'll just sail out of bounds. Not a cross as he attempted to, but was blocked away. And there'll be a corner kick for Rollins as Ray Girk, the corner kick specialist, will take over. Now I'd like to see what they do with Avram as he's right there at the bottom of the goal. Matched up right next to Richards and three other Tampa defenders. They know they know who their get their guy is. And it's up. And the header's gonna be booted out again by Tampa. Great cross from Ray. Gurky. And Rollins fans not happy as apparently it's going to go back on Tampa and Tampa will get the offensive possession. Rollins fans booing the refs after that call. I thought it went out. Joey Bozzo takes it back out to Richards who gives it to number six, Adrian Constantine. Boots it down the field. And Frank Barry getting a little push, actually, from number nine is Risky. Oh. Nice save from Iverson. Ready to pounce on that ball once it gets there. Not letting And that was not through. what you wanted to see if you were a, a Tars fan. Is, I believe that was, that was number, huh, I actually did not catch his name. Is Ray that ball going to boot? Pass, but it seems like he got. And that went through the window of toe. the construction. I don't think they're going to get that ball anytime soon. That goes into an abandoned building. Seems like... Someone want a free soccer ball? I'll go pick that up. Seems like Greg Gerke got cleated once he ended up sending that cross. He's holding... He, yeah, he might be a little bit cramped as he's kind of stretched that 
right leg. Again, the weather's not too bad out. Not humid at all. Actually, really fantastic weather to be playing soccer. Football, if you call it. <laughs> playing football. It's The uh, breeze is nice. It's a nice low 70s, I believe, uh, is what my weather app said before I headed out. Could help out with the players a lot in this condition. It's Instead fantastic playing hot. weather. So really, cramp should have been such an issue, but maybe, I mean, Girk has been on the field for a long time. He has. So he's just going to get a much-deserved break as Girk's been doing a lot for the Tars. George New's going to throw it in. The ref checking the ball to make sure it's up to standard. Make sure there's no flat, flat conspiracies going on today. And again, arguments about the ball they were going to use as George New sticks with his first option. Kevin DeRocha waiting to get that ball. Kevin DeRocha really is taking up that position in the midfield. He's all over it. Every single pass, every single time that ball goes in the middle, he's right there to go after it and end up sending the perfect pass up through. Now, what do you think? Because Tampa, Tampa has seemed to weather the storm a little bit and has slowed down the Rollins' attack as they had all the momentum going in the halftime, but they've done a good job of slowing that down. What do you think Tampa has done in order to uh, do that? Right now that I see, Tampa's not really finding perfect passes. They're just trying to send the ball through and hoping that one of the defenders of the Tars can be caught off guard so that they can be able to capitalize and get through. Really, they're just trying to send the ball up and hoping for the best. And again, another scrum there as Max Buecki is going to go down the ground. That'll be the Tars ball. It's been a very physical game. A lot of people, you know, complain that soccer is not a not a very contact sport. Contact sport is kind of for the weak. But anyone watching this game and surely any other professional games and not just your brother's middle school soccer game is going to notice that you, you get some physicality in here. No one plays nice in this. They don't. It's all about who can be the strongest and who can hold on to the ball longer. Again, Rollins trying to break their four-game losing skid and trying to get their first conference win of the season. They have yet to be able to uh, get a conference win and have had their goal uh, total go shoot down drastically when they started conference play. They've only converted one since then. Make that two uh, as that goal earlier today by Logan Lasky in the 41st minute. As we have another player down, it looks like Damian Clark holding his f head or face. And that's not what you want to see with Rollins right now. Some of your key players, Damian Clark, your second leading scorer, going out right now. You seem to be a little banged up, especially with their next opponent in Palm Beach, Atlanta, ranked number two in the country. And it looks like they're going to take a look at him. They got some water. He looks a little bit fine, so it might just be uh, fatigue. Yes. But again, you never know. He's smiling. It's probably something light right now. He knows he can probably go on continuing. Probably not too major. There you go, Damian Clark will be walking off on his own towards the bench. Check, check in for the Kevin DeRocca will be coming back into the game. Irishman with the ball. Let's see who's gonna, he's going to pass it to. Now, Alex, if you were Rollins, would you continue to stay aggressive, or would you like to uh, be more defensive and kind of hold this ball in possession, even with 19, uh, cross that 28 minutes left until uh, the game? As we see DeRocha kind of had a little speed. Raising, oh. Whoa, and what a bomber that was. 
Goes to the left side of the goal, right into the post. And Jake Richards does a fantastic job laying out for it. He ends up going Didn't get a ball, that. but yeah, he showed great, great athleticism there. He tried to go after that far post shot, but sadly it ended up going out wide. And he used every inch of his body to try to block that. Hedemako with the ball out. Just back shoes it out. Again, that'll be Tampa's throw in. Number 16, Joey Baza. As that throwing goes a little past. And number eight, Till Newman trying to chase that ball. Looks like it'll be Rollins' possession. Iverson really needs to be key on those end up bombing the ball forward. Again, Rollins trying to push it downfield. Kicked back out there by Tampa. They end up losing possession. Let's see how Rollins can reform to end up defending this attack. See, Rollins doing a good job of negating the freak, uh, the pushover. As both players fall to the ground. Again, a very chippy game throughout the uh, throughout this match. As it'll be Rollins' ball, and it's been a lot of fighting between the players. Tampa, the yeah, not ground. happy with that call. That's not the first time, as the refs have been pretty pretty favorable of. Rollins so far. And we got another whistle here. It'll be Tampa's ball. Tony Soler is going to take the kick. Let's see how Tampa sets up for this cross and how they're going to take it. Height Coach. advantage does go to Tampa. As you see in that little, in that pocket with all the players. The coach is ordering everyone to go into the box to actually get it's going over, ball. header up. And a great defense there by Rollins. As that was a bomber. <laughs> and number 16 is not happy with that outcome, Joey Baza. Seems to be like a foul was called on Simonu. It's a deadly angle to take a free kick. If they can end up having a right foot on it, they probably could score off this chance or end up going after the cross. You think Solo's going to try to curve it? No. They're going to try to get over. What a play. And what a save by Iverson. The counterattack is starting. That was some trickeration there by, by Tampa. 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 Ball up forward. Drost has to try to push it upfield as Tampa just tries to get rid of it and regroup. What a what a kick there, a free kick by Tampa as they had all the stops. No one saw number 13, I believe, crawl through that backfield as he had a wide open shot. And great job by Iverson defending that ball. That is not an easy play to go against. They played it smart at that moment by looking at who was open and sending up the passes because no one was expecting for it. That was fantastic. About yeah, crosses. Fantastic play call there. Adamok loses the header. It's going to still be Rollins' ball. The Rocha really is taking a handle of this ball, looking to see who's open. The Rocha trying to get it in the middle. Oh, fake from Adam Stephon Avram. He gets a shot oh. off. It's Richards with a great save. And that's the battle we wanted to see. Stefan's leg versus Richards' ability to hold that goal post as Richards does a great job there. It was an incredible that boot. shot from Avrams. End up curling it. But then Richards was able to be there just in time to go after that save. What a save there by Richards. And what a shot by Avram. It took skills to do both. Absolutely. Both that, that is a great matchup that we'd like to see more of, hopefully, before this game ends. Again, Rollins, surprisingly, has uh, overtaken shots on goal as they have the header kind of cross in by Frank Barry, who has that height advantage. But Rollins has 14 shots on goal compared to only uh, 
six for Tampa, which is very surprising to me because Tampa definitely had the advantage early on in the game and were being super aggressive offensively, and they've kind of changed that up a little bit and haven't been as aggressive. It seems like they're probably waiting for that moment to go through instead of being just aggressive and pushing because it doesn't seem, first off, at first it wasn't working off for them, so they're probably going after a new approach instead of pressuring but being more conservative. Cross goes in. And they'll go back out as Ramsey Torre will try to get out. And number 13, Roje Smith chasing the ball across the field back and forth. DeRocha. DeRocha with shot. shot. And that goes way over the goal. DeRocha wanted to take a chance on that, see if he can get on that name of scoring. Hey, if you don't shoot, you don't score. So Rollins really taking that to heart as they're trying, uh, really stepping up their shots from the first half. My Again, apologies. That was Simenu who took it, not Simenu. DeRocha. My apologies as well. They both have similar haircuts. <laughs> yes, they do. Kind of hard to tell apart. Great defense there by... And Mako wasn't ready for that. Number 16, Simenu, as they're going to try to play fast here. Frank Barry. Barry says not so fast and kind of slows that down. Good thing he was there just in time because if not... And George New just Tampa boots that three. out of the field. And that goes yet again into another abandoned building. We've had more balls go through the windows of abandoned buildings than so far goals in this game. And it seems like the... The staff is dealing with a ball issue as both balls have been unretrievable so far. They're probably hoping that they don't kick more down in that area. Iverson now is going to take the kick as he tries to set it up to clear. And that'll be Rollins' ball again. as number 14 for Tampa. Sala Amgad kicks that ball out. DeRocha has the ball. Let's see. He ends up oh, that is not a matchup you want to get a, get uh, behind. Smart play from DeRocha. As Abram it through, but Abram was unable to get a good touch on the ball. Abram surprisingly not going. He walking behind as Richards had the ball really close to him. Abram with that speed could have tried to take advantage of that. That's a handball. Ends up hitting it below the shoulder area. And we've hit the 20 minute mark here at Rollins College Barker Family Stadium. Again, I'm Wyatt Wells. This is Alex Bernays. Venegas. Dang it. I'm going to get it eventually. I'm it's so okay. sorry. Last time I was doing this, the commentator also messed up on my last name. Hey, it's all. <laughs> we're all human. I've had my fair share of mistaking last <laughs> names as well. As we see Jake Richards. Who we've called his name a lot in this game. Again, one of our star players who actually turned out to be a big factor in the game. Normally, they'll kind of take a second uh, back seat when we do our predictions. But Richards has definitely done such a great job for Tampa and the Spartans. He has made a huge difference for the Spartans. He hasn't met... Even though they've conceded one goal, he's stopped most of the other chances that were able. And that's something that can make a huge difference. Because if they're able to tie, then it could mean good news for the Spartans. Richard's trying to fake out Rollins' defense. The two players that are trying to play defense, as he tried to look over to his uh, right side of the field, just toss it back to his left. And there you go, number 10, Tony Soler. Got a piece of it and got a little bit behind. He tried to get through with some skill moves, but wasn't able to. Roger Smith greeting Iverson, making sure he doesn't have it too easy. Iverson is really looking to send that ball forward. And that's a header intercepted there as DeRocha kind of uses his nose to get rid of that. DeRocha really likes to seek after that ball no matter what. Even if it's in the air, he'll go after it. Even if it's low, he'll go after it no matter what. And it looks like Tampa is going to have a sub soon. 
as they're prepping him on the side of the field. They're trying to find a way on which side of the field to attack this Rollins offense. Looks like they're going to go with the left for right now. They're really having a tough time. Rojay. Yeah. Rollins playing very good defense, not letting them get inside too much. It's a huge difference from the first half. As Joey Baiza is running up with it. He was calling it earlier and they weren't seeing him, so he got his touch. <laughs> he was chasing after that ball and didn't want them to get it at all. And we're going to get a substitution here. That's going to be number 19 for Tampa. Jan Walker, the midfield sophomore out of Switzerland, is going to come in for number 16, Joey Baiza. And a, what a stop. Trying to get that out there. They're going to cross the game, but a little too much height. As well, that ball did look good. Goes out of bounds to the side of the net. Good thing he was there in a the far post, because if he wasn't there, he wouldn't have had the chance to actually hit that ball in. What a boot by Iverson as that gets all the way down the field. And there's a chance. Stephon Abram. Ball didn't come down fast enough, but Abram really trying to fight off the ball. defender. Getting a little physical there. As that's what you're going to have to do against defending one of the two-time offensive players of the week in the conference. It was pretty tough in that situation. He was covered by two defenders at that moment, but he had a little space to kind of play around with the ball. And Avon leaves second in the league with 17 points total. No slouch here. Barry was right there at the moment to get that rebound and send it out. And DeRocha trying to take that upfield, but Tampa's going to get it back. Rojay back to Rollins. And they're going to try to push it. Rocha's open, but... A little was a little too slow on that ball. But he's still fighting for that ball. Staying on it. Trying to get a chance for it. And Stefan going after Richards. Actually, now that'll be DeRocha going after Richards. It seems like Damian Clark's getting ready to go in. And that's be that'll be good as we saw him with a on the ground earlier. Stefan! Abrams. Stefan's trying to make a move. He's trying to look for that perfect space. But sadly, he's called off. And it looks like it's going to be a... It's going to be Tampa's ball. It was a whistle on Rollins. I'm not sure what Stefan did to warrant that. It seemed more of... Tampa's side as DeRocha is going to come off and take a breather in place uh, Damian Clark will replace him seems like the Tars are putting in fresh legs with Damian trying to get that extra oomph up forward and Frank Barry just sends it back out and now go out of bounds to be Tampa's ball again Again, welcome to Barker Family Stadium. We got 14 minutes left to the to the final buzzer. Right now, Rollins leads Tampa nil to or one to nil. Seems to be a foul. One of the Tampa players knocked into one of the Rollins. Again, this game has been very chippy, very physical. Lots of guys have been on the ground. Stefan Avram had a beautiful shot earlier, and again, that matchup between Stefan Avram and Jake Richards definitely lived up to the hype briefly for a moment. With that shot and save earlier. Oh, Barry with the mistake almost. Barry messing almost up. put his team in a very bad spot. As Aver as Good thing he was able to turn and send it back. Damian off Clark, the ball bounces off his head and goes to Stefan Avram. Even though it bounced off his head, it was able to go forward and go in his favor. Adamok now trying to find some room. Gets it to Clark. Damian really is going after this play. Marecki <laughs> now trying to get it back to Clark. They're going to try to get it to Stefan as he crosses. Let's see if he has the space. 
and they're gonna they're gonna kick it back out. Abram not really noticing the ball is gonna come his way. Oh. I believe that was a. Save. I thought that was a goal for a second. That looked for that went right behind the goal. What a what an attempt there by Jake Richards. Just seeing him lay out for the ball, one hundred percent. Look at no that. What? That's like watching MLS soccer right now with Ibrahimovic trying to shoot that goal to all the other goalies. He's showing us that no matter what, he'll still go after that ball. And that's why he's regarded as one of the best goalies around. And again, what a shot. I mean, right off, Stefan Aaron was in no position there and a good shot. Barry across that in the middle, middle it's going to be dangerous. And Tampa's going to go on the ground, no call. As they are not happy with that, they were looking for a uh, that was pretty risky a free right kick. There. Let's seems see. Like Avram wants to go after that ball, but it seems to be sending back to the keeper, Richards. <laughs> Frank Barry now sizing up number nine, Juancho Fernandez, as he tries to take a shot, but is easily defended by uh, Iverson. And he'll just pick that up and walk past as Tampa tries to give him some trouble. Iverson had no problems in getting that ball, even though it, it was... Adamok! Trying to get out, guess it gives it to Avram. Adamok had a wide open lane down Damian left side Clark's of the pitch. After that ball, ends up bombing. What a body out. there by Damian Clark. And Roger Smith there doing a good job trying to block that possession. I was We're playing basketball. New from the forwards of Rollins. Damien is going all out for this. And Frank Barry makes a mistake and lets his defender get behind him, but Rollins catches it out and helps him. Can Newell get to this ball? Sends Max Borecki sends this out to Stefan. And that was a bit of a mess up there as it goes out of bounds. It'll he be Rollins' ball. He could have had no chance but to send it out because if he would have sent it another way, Abram was on him and could have easily gotten that ball. Now, Alex, with 10 minutes, uh, just about 10 minutes and 40 seconds left until the game, what do you think Tampa needs to do right now to try to get back in this ball game? Well, Tampa needs to stop sending those balls up because apparently Frank Berry is all over them. He's always flying up just to head those balls. Every cross that goes in, he's able to stop it. So far, they need to find a new approach to get past the Rollins defense. You're right. Frank Berry has been doing an outstanding job here for the Tars. As that cross goes over, Damian Clark heads it in. And that'll go out of bounds. Smart play. They end up going far post. And Damian ends up heading it towards the middle to see if he can get someone from the Tars to be there and score. Again, Tampa does not want to be on their side of the field right now. They want to try to push it and get some offense going. Great Tampa's chances to tie this game. As it's currently 1-0, Rollins. Again, Rollins in yellow. Tampa in red. Tampa's trying to push the, push the ball. Roje splits the defense. Tampa sure has been try having to look a cross in, but he loses track of the ball almost. Fakes out a defender again, showing that fancy footwork, crosses it in, and easy Iverson catches it. There was no problem there for the goalie. Tampa's been having a rough time trying to break through Rollins. It's like they kind of have to send it forward no matter what. Stefan Avram now. You'd like to see Avram get a little more help from his defenders as Damian Clark try to, or his uh, uh, teammates, as Damian Clark try to go in there and cash on the Roje. Yeah, this guy has some speed. Because if the defense of Tampa is mostly focusing on Abrams, that allows Damian and Adam Mackle to be able to get through being unnoticed since most of the attention is on Abrams. Yeah, I promise that as Abram needs his team to be up there with him. It seems like Abram's all alone as that goal goes through. And that goes in the middle to try to get a header back in. And that'll go out of bounds again. It'll be a corner kick for the Spartans. And it looks like they... I'm not sure what that was. As they're going to switch off rotation. Number seven, Julius Becker who provide a real spark for uh, Tampa and the Spartans earlier on in the first half as he had those fresh legs speeding and really giving the defenders for uh, Rollins trouble. Yes. So we'll see what he can do here. Let's see what can they produce out of this corner. They tried to fake it to Becker. It's still in the middle. 
Rollins wants to get it out and they kick it out. Tampa still with possession. Pretty dangerous place right Roj now. Try to shine, line up for the shot. Cross again, Roj with the header. One of the tempers. And that goes off his head. Fancy. Iverson with the save. As that was another shot there by Tampa. Tampa really trying to get those attempts in. Like they said, ramp up that offense. They're trying whatever now, they there's can. There's only seven minutes and 50 seconds left in this game. Trying to get that goal to tie it. They tried doing a little bicycle kick to see if they can get a chance to score. And again, Tampa knows they can play with Rollins. Rollins is a good team, even though they've lost four straight. We talked about it earlier in the season. But Tampa's no slouch either. They've played very good against some very good ranked opponents and have only lost the games by a few scores. So there's definitely no issue of talent here as both teams can easily compete with each other. They're going to look for attack. Abram's going through everyone but taken down. <laughs> Abram just got caught in his feet and maybe a possible other defender's leg as he trips over. Richards is going to give it to number six, Adrian Constantine. He's going to try to move it up the field. they got to do a better job to get that over as they're trying to get it to Rojay, but it gets headed out by Rollins, and that'll be Tampa's ball. Damian putting in that pressure. Damian Clark not letting them have an inch. Again, trying to get it to Rojay, who seems to be their primary offensive scorer. And Rollins kicks that out again. One thing that I've noticed is that Rollins is really playing defensively. I can even see Adam Mako staying back instead of being up forward. Constantine with the throw in, tries to get it over Rollins' defense. Ooh. And a hard fall there on see, Tampa. That, that, was number, that, that, was, yeah, that was number 11. As Rollins right now is trying to push it up the field. Trying to find a way to Rollins break Rollins setting through. up a little bit. Trying to find some lanes. Abram Stephon Abram. He has the speed. Oh. And Richards again. Another fantastic save there. As he went all in for that ball. After that first goal, Richards really doesn't want the Tars to score. He's doing whatever he can to not let anything be possible. Man, I'm almost rooting for Tampa to score so we can see a penalty kick shoot off. Possibly a for Abram. And inside the box. Abram and the and Richards off the bounce ends up hitting it with his hand. That left, that right side seems to be really open. We can see if they'll take advantage of that down the stretch. As Stefan still given the defenders all he's got. Abrams. He's going to have to get a few grass stains out of his uniform before the next game. Seems like Damien and Logan are switching positions. It's probably to add more attack force into it. Five minutes remaining now until the game. Right here, Barker Family Stadium. Tampa versus Rollins. Tampa showing some fight late in this game as they were, um, they were pretty sound in the first half. But Rollins has come back with a 41st minute by Logan, uh, 41st minute goal. Abrams threw, what a through ball. Let's see if he can get a perfect touch on it. Abrams was a defender. Can he score? Abrams with footwork. Oh. And Richards wins that matchup. Richards As he's really pumped up against one of the best players in this conference. Richards doesn't want anything to go through. That's he's a one on his toes. Just moving. That's a one on one matchup that Avery normally wins, but he hasn't faced this kind of caliber of a goalie yet in Richards. Those quick reactions of Richards really are paying off. Every second, he's ready. He sees where the ball can go. He's almost, he's almost single handedly keeping Tampa in this game. No Again. wonder why he's our star player. And the clock has seemed to take a pause. And they'll kick it in again for the corner kick. Damien's getting ready for the cross. Let's see what he can do. Clark just bounces right off the Tampa Bay's cleat. And that'll go out of bounds again. You've seen so many corners from the Tars. And they're but taking their time trying to, trying to weed out this possession as long as possible. 
with only three minutes and 40 seconds left. Tampa's really got to push the ball out field if they want to have a chance. And if you're going to push the ball out field, you might want to get the Roj, which they haven't yet. And another whistle. Seems to be a foul called on. Seems like a yellow card might be given. Seems to be given to Max Muki. I'm not too sure on that. Max Muki with a possible yellow card. Try to cross it down the middle. They have the height Ooh. advantage. Iverson takes it. Gets in. Oh, and what a save! Maybe the, the play of the game. What a good job there by number 23, George New. What Iverson goal. loses the ball as he grabs it. We see on this replay, and George New boots it out like it's nothing. What a goal line clearance. Just being right there at the perfect moment to stop that ball from going in. That was a surefire goal if George New wasn't in there. And as you see, the crowd now getting into it again as they were at the beginning of the quarter, stomping their feet on the stands, making a little rumble. The crowd's going insane right now just by chanting, just giving momentum to the Tars. They know that could have been the game winner and the game sealer for Rollins as we only have two minutes and 30 seconds. It's not over yet, but Tampa's chances aren't looking too good. So many things are happening in these final five minutes. Well, two minutes, but... G George knew. Fantastic job there, awareness. As we see now... Ooh. Damian Clark avoids the slide. They try to get it up again. They have the height advantage for the header. Iverson loses it again off the bar. And it gets kicked out deeper into the Rollins territory. That was really a close one. If it wasn't for that bar, it would have went And we'll see whose ball that is. They're going to give it to Tampa, even though Coach was arguing that it was for Rollins. Rollins are really on that back pedal to stay back and not let anything happen. And Stefan. Abrams on his own. Let's see if he can send up forward to New. Stefan trying to do what he does, but it gets rejected by the defense. He takes on one defender, but sadly he can't Boot open. that over to Barry, who sends it right back. Handball. Seems like they're going to keep playing. Handball was not called there. We got a minute 30 left in this game. Whoa, and almost a huge mess up there by Tampa of an own goal. That was a deadly cross. Oh boy, Richard. Hit that ball yeah. It would have straight to goal. Richards was not ready for that. Number two, Ramsey Torre just had it go off his foot the wrong direction, and it almost cost them another goal. Clock still running now with about a minute left. Tampa's got to move the ball all the way downfield as Rollins is just trying to park it in the middle, park it in that corner, and let time wind down as much as possible. But Tampa gets it out. And Tampa's going to give it to Richards. We're going to look for a boot probably with 48 seconds left. Never mind, he's smart with it and gives it to number 20. He's going to try to find his way upfield. He boots it over. Rollins got the numbers on defense. Twenty-eight seconds left as Damian, Damian Clark boots it out. Not a smart move from Damian. He could have. He had enough time to end up taking that ball forward, but decides to clear it out. Fifteen seconds left into the game. Tampa chances are winding down. Ten seconds left, and it looks like Rollins is going to come out with a victory as they boot it away to the other side. Richards is going to have one more chance. And it's over. Rollins defeats Tampa and wins their first conference game of the season. Breaks a four-game losing streak. This could be good for Rollins leading up to their next game against Palm Beach Atlantic. Absolutely. The number two team in the polls right now. Palm Beach Atlantic is going to provide a much bigger test than Tampa has. Even though Tampa, not a slouch, not a pushover. This is a well-fought game. As you can see, the emotions of the players... Tampa still on the ground. Some of them tying their shoes or just sitting in disbelief as Iverson was was huddled over by all the defenders. And 
uh, trying to just see how we can wrap this up as we see Damian Clark being a good sport going over as, uh, as long as uh, Ray Girk as well and Adam Ock trying to console the Tampa players and showing good sportsmanship. But let me go back to that play that's saved by George New. Had he not been there, this that would most was, likely have gone to overtime, barring some crazy, crazy save. mess up. Perfect, perfectly in position. He knew what to do, didn't get flustered, didn't try to do something stupid. He just booted that ball out of there and showed a great, great job under pressure with the game on the line to take the ball and get it out of there for his team. If it wasn't for New, they would have been tied and end up going over overtime. So again, let's recap here. Tampa starts off this game with high-flying offense, really controls the possession, and it really looked like Rollins wasn't getting much on offense, and we didn't know what they needed to do as the fans cheer on their tars as they go into the locker room after a well-fought game. But back to that, Tampa really had the advantage in the early on with uh, their possession and tempo. They were really pushing the defense, but Frank Barry and the defense settled down for Rollins, and they, they kept him out mostly. And Stephon Abram really helped. He should have gotten the game early, I believe. He did a great job. That matchup between him and Richards was definitely one to be seen. I really wish we would we could have seen a little more of that. What do you think? One big thing that let down Tampa so much was those offsides. Even though they were playing fast and on pressure in the first half, those offsides was what killed them a lot. And so far, we have saw that the Tigers weren't offsides. Be not even offsides. They took advantage of every chance they got to even score a goal that could lead them to their victory. Absolutely. You talk about that offsides. It was a very glaring mismatch as Ro uh, Tampa had seven offsides penalties and Rollins only had two. That speed really got to him. Again, on shots on goal as well, the Tars really turned it around on offense and beat, uh, beat out Tampa with a 19-9 to shot ratio. Four of, them for, uh, four of them on goal for Tampa, eight of them for Rollins. Well, what a fantastic game. Logan Lasky at the 41st minute gets the goal to lift the Tars over the, over, Tampa, over the Tampa Spartans. We're here from Winter Park, Florida. Have a good night, everyone.